Hi, it's me, Blom. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. Now you can actually hear me. So I'd like to talk a little bit about sleep disorders. So, for most of my life, I've had some problems sleeping. Um, and, um, didn't really know what to do with it. Didn't really understand that I had sleep disorders. And so there really wasn't much of anything that I did about it. And then once I figured out that I had sleep disorders, well, I didn't have um, health insurance to do anything about it. I did a little bit of research, though, and I figured I probably had uh, insomnia and uh, sleep apnea and maybe restless leg syndrome, but I renamed it restless limb syndrome. Um... I also realized that sometimes gas would wake me up. And when I say gas, I mean flatulence. And I know that may sound strange, but I didn't know it at the time, but I have an intolerance, a fairly high intolerance to lactose, which is in all, almost all dairy products. And lactose in me, even a small, small amount will produce a huge amount of gas and that really is frustrating because number one it smells horrible number two uh, it can be as frequent as every three to five minutes that I'll have a, uh, a fart and number well anyways it also when it's when I've got that frequent of farting, it will disrupt my sleep because the gas will build up in my intestines so much that I'll wake up to ha because I need to fart. So it sucks. Finally, when I was living in Indonesia, uh, they instituted national health insurance and I was able to get it with my wife and children because I was a permanent resident. And... I saw this uh, sign at the hospital where my wife was being treated for her cancer saying that they did something about uh, sleep disorders. So I thought, great. And I signed up and they sent me to a psychiatrist. And I was pretty sure I didn't need a psychiatrist to help me with my sleep disorders. But that's what they did. So I went to the psychiatrist. She interviewed me and decided there was nothing mentally wrong with me that was causing my sleep disorders, which I figured because I had been dealing with them most of my life. And uh, But then there was no follow-through with me seeing a specialist for sleep disorders or somebody who would be able to diagnose which biological sleep disorders I had. So that was the end of that. <clears throat> now, just to explain, uh, there are different kinds of ins insomnia. There's uh, onset, which is when you have trouble sleeping at the beginning so when I was younger I used to have pretty bad sleep uh, onset insomnia sorry and you know I would sometimes I would sit there spinning around in my bed trying to get comfortable trying to fall asleep um, for an hour or more and uh, I learned two things about that one and I actually managed to defeat it and the, f the first one is is that our brains are what generally keep us awake 
so if we're uh, emotionally upset, we're going to be even more likely not to sleep and not to sleep well. So I developed my own way of dealing with the onset insomnia. So at night, I would lay down in bed and my mind may be whirling with emotions or it may just be full of thoughts because I think a lot. I mean, I think pretty much everybody does, but I have a lot of things that I am thinking about. Uh, I don't know if you'd call me a deep thinker or just I like to think about a lot of different stuff, whatever, but uh, I would lay down in bed and I would try some relaxation techniques and I found that sometimes just clenching as many muscles in my body and then slowly releasing them one by one from top to bottom or bottom to top sometimes helped uh, to relax me enough that I could get to sleep. Um, but I found something that was even more effective and I'll make a separate video about that. So anyways, I used that technique, and as a result, I stopped having problems with onset insomnia, unless I was super, super, super upset. Um, and eventually, sorry, with the addition of something that uh, for onset insomnia, I was almost always able to defeat that as well. So that's the first one. Uh, there's There are other kinds of insomnia, but the other one that I have trouble with is sometimes I'll wake up in the night and I'll have trouble getting back to sleep. And some it used to be that that would be because of nightmares and stuff, but I got to the point where, in my 20s I think it was, uh, nightmares ceased to bother me. And uh, basically, my I learned a simple trick. And the, here's a simple trick: if you're being woken up by nightmares, um, what I would do is I would wake myself up. I would keep my eyes open, and I would think about things that had nothing to do with that stupid nightmare. And once I had calmed myself down, and my thoughts were no longer pinned to the contents of that nightmare, I would go back to sleep. And it'd be pretty easy using the technique that I used and having calmed myself down. And the other part of that problem was sometimes I'd just wake up and there'd be thoughts running through my head for whatever reason that, uh, that would uh, make it hard for me to fall asleep. And again, I used that same technique and um, for the most part, that would work. Although sometimes I would have to get up and do something in order to stop that. Like if it was just thoughts, you know, that were not attached to anything that I could do, then I just used my technique. But if the thoughts revolved around, oh, did my child get up for school? Uh, did I remember to set the alarm? Um, did, you know, basically I was concerned that I had forgotten to do something. Then I would have to usually get up, uh, if it was a serious enough concern, and check on it to make sure, and then go back to bed. And I could sleep. Now, I got so good at falling asleep that even at work, if I was, uh, sleepy, I could take my 15-minute, uh, break and I could put my head down on my desk and fall asleep. Just like that. 15 minutes of a nap. And that was pretty helpful. Not everybody understood why I was doing it. Some people thought I was slacking off. But I was explained if somebody brought it to my attention what I was doing. And then it was cool. I do remember one time, however, that my second problem, which is sleep apnea, actually disturbed me while I was sleeping and it disturbed me to the point that it freaked out my co-workers. See, I had taken, I was taking a 15 minute nap at my desk 
and this was when I was working at uh, Rhythms, and this was at the point where there was almost nobody left at Rhythms because the company went bankrupt due to the dot-com crash uh, in 2001. Uh, and so there's just a small crew of people left, maybe 50 people out of over 2,000. And I was around a very small number of those people um, in my team. And so they were all busy working, and I was taking my nap, and suddenly I go, <coughs> and I was gasping for breath very, very desperately because I had a sleep apnea incident while I was taking my nap and stopped breathing. And that's what sleep apnea is. You stop breathing while you're sleeping. And I had been sleeping long enough, I, apparently, that it was difficult for me to catch my breath. And everybody was just freaking out around me. And uh, eventually I got, you know, obviously <laughs> I'm not a zombie or something like that. Eventually I got my breath and and uh, things calmed down and everybody calmed down and I apologized. And, but yeah, that was uh, a very strong indicator that I had sleep apnea. And, um, but I dealt with that for many, many years. And sleep apnea is... Um, Sometimes, but not always, accompanied by snoring. And I've had bad snoring problems for most of my life that have only gotten worse as I've gotten older. I'm not, um, I'm not what you would call obese to the point that my weight would make a difference. Uh, never have been. Um, but there are some people who snore just because they're overweight or because um, I have a friend uh, who's both overweight and... His, uh, I think he, he had a problem in his nose where the passages were messed up here, and he actually had to have surgery to help make it so they could breathe better at night when he was sleeping. Um, but, um, yeah, so I dealt with that until, oh, about uh, three years ago, almost when I moved back to the U.S. from Indonesia. Now, I'd, I'd learned some tricks, because there are other things that affect your sleep. For example, a lot of people uh, will eat shortly before bedtime, and that can produce a lot of problems, um, not just sleep apnea. It can also cause uh, acid reflux or indigestion that goes up your esophagus, and it can even go into your mouth and it can disrupt your breathing. Can You could aspirate that, that acid that's coming up from your stomach, which means it goes into your lungs. And that is very, very uncomfortable. Um, and <clears throat> you can uh, have other problems, such as you can develop what's called Barrett's esophagus, where your esophagus is so scarred by the, the acid reflux or sometimes known as GERD, or gastroesophageal reflux disease, um, that it's precancerous. And um, in worst cases, it can actually become a cancer. And you can also have uh, other problems that are a consequence of the uh, reflux into your esophagus. But it, you know, it, it can cause you to not breathe. And trust me when I say that that sucks. It's not something you want. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. So, yeah, so uh, sleep disorders like sleep apnea are actually pretty dangerous. And when you have uh, <sighs> reflux going into your intestine, or no, sorry, your esophagus, that is not a good thing at all. So I do encourage anybody who's suffering from reflux to take these simple steps to prevent it from disturbing your sleep and hurting your digestive system. Step number one, never eat anything less than two hours before your bedtime.
Okay, that's a big one. Step number two. After you eat, make sure that you're going to be in a position where your food can be draining out of your stomach. If you're in a position where the exit of your stomach is cut off, that's not going to happen. All right, let's see. Nope, that's not going to work. There we go. So the next step is to make sure that when you go to sleep, if you are still experiencing uh, gas gastric distress after using those two steps consistently, the third step that I found is extremely effective is to sleep on your left side, not on your back, not on your right side, not on your front, sleep on your left side. The reason is, is that food um, exits your body on the left side. I'm sorry, not your body. <laughs> it uh, exits your stomach on the left-hand side. So when you're lying on your right side, your, your stomach has a hard time draining itself. And that can be a problem, of course. It can also cause you, when you wake up, to feel nausea or extra hunger um, and other things uh, that you can experience. But um, at, at the very least it's going to mean that you're going to wake up with the food from last night still in your stomach and that's probably not a good thing, right? So, um, getting back to the whole problem of sleep disorders, uh, there's restless leg syndrome, uh, which means that your legs tend to move a lot while you're sleeping and not because you're turning over, but they just kind of randomly move. And uh, I've never seen... In the research I did, I didn't see anything about all of your limbs, uh, meaning your arms and legs. <clears throat> but I, I have noticed that I sometimes move, spontaneously move my limbs. But there is another problem where your brain is supposed to shut off the use of your body while you're sleeping so that during dreams you're not moving your body. However, I have on occasion had experiences, very rarely, where I will be woken up because my body is doing what my dream body is doing. So I remember one time I was uh, in a fight or something like that and uh, I very violently in my dream went like this with my right arm and for some reason my right arm was not disabled while I was having that dream and I actually physically did the same thing with my right arm and slammed it into the the wood paneled wall next to me which had a lot of grooves in it so it was, you know, it hurt quite a bit um, because it was you know, more painful than hitting a smooth wall because of the grooves. Hooray, that was fun. Right, so um, there's that. And there's also something called narcolepsy where you spontaneously fall asleep throughout the day, anytime, day or night. It's Sometimes I think they call it sleeping beauty syndrome. Uh, there's called hyperlepsy. And that's where you sleep too much. And I experienced hyperlepsy, but I think my hyperlepsy was just because I could not get a good night's sleep. Um, hyperlepsy just caused me to wake up feeling tired. And even if I, and if I didn't sleep at least nine hours, I would definitely feel tired. Um, and I would usually also have to take a nap during the day. On top of that. Um, with uh, hyperlepsy, which for me was a symptom of the real problem, uh, I would also um, often feel tired even if I slept 10, 11, 12 hours. And I could sleep that much because of my sleep disorder of sleep apnea. And then uh, there are some other ones as well, um, but I think those are the biggest ones. And... Uh, my my daughter I've seen has hyperlepsy. She can sleep a long time, and part of that is because uh, it's actually a symptom for her, possibly of what I've got. But it's also possible that just because she refuses to keep a consistent sleep schedule, sometimes she'll go to bed at eleven uh, on a school night or twelve, and then she gets up at five thirty. Um, so that's not good. Because then uh, by the weekend, she's very tired. And sometimes during the week, if we're in the car, she'll fall asleep in the car. And then on a weekend, she'll sleep 
12, 13, 14 hours, and I've tried to explain, and she just doesn't want to listen, because, you know, hey, 15-year-olds, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so those are um, several of the sleep disorders that I've come across, um, and what ended up happening is, is after... I returned from Indonesia in 2017. I was, uh, when I first came back, I was living at my buddy Brian's house with my kids. And one night I woke up and I was horribly struggling to get my breath. <clears throat> Something was really wrong. I, I, I sat up and that didn't help. I stood up and I leaned against the wall, and I was just hacking and hacking and hacking and, and trying to breathe, and it was horrible. I mean, just... <gasps> I had a tears streaming down my face. I don't think my kids woke up miraculously despite this, or maybe they woke up and then just went back to sleep. But uh, it was horrible. It was terrifying. It took me minutes to be able to breathe again, and ultimately what happened was is I coughed, uh, and some, apparently while I was sleeping, there had been some food that had gotten into my lungs. And I don't know what it was, um, but I figured out that that was what actually had happened because, uh, a couple of days later I was looking at the wall where, for some reason, where I had been leaning and I noticed splatters, brown splatters on the wall. Um, so I had aspirated some kind of uh, stuff from my stomach, and that had caused me to almost die. Um, so that wasn't true sleep apnea, that was different, but um, that scared me. And I went to the doctor, and the doctor sent me to um, sleep experts called the Sleep Institute. Um, and they got me onto uh, an auto CPAP machine which I've been using ever since, and I have to tell you what. There are pros and cons, and I'll do a different video about my machine, but it's great. It's, it allows me to sleep well. I can usually get eight hours of sleep, and I'm good. And I don't have a lot of prob problems with falling asleep anymore uh, in the middle of the day. Uh, you know, I mean, not falling asleep, but... Well, sometimes, yeah, sometimes actually I would fall asleep. I was just so tired because of the sleep apnea that I would fall asleep while typing on the computer usually. Um, that could happen at work or at, um, or in the car uh, or at home. Um, but yeah, so that problem ceases to be, has ceased to be an issue. Um, so yeah, I would encourage you, if you're having trouble sleeping, um, if you wake up and you're still tired, um, if you uh, wake up gasping for breath or coughing, um, because of that can happen when you have sleep apnea. If your partner complains that you snore a lot, especially if you're overweight, but not necessarily, you should really get uh, some help professionally. Now keep in mind that sometimes psychological reasons do cause uh, sleep disorders. You know, like the insomnia stuff, that's generally related to psychological issues uh, or your brain is just thinking too much and you need to calm it down. I'll do separate videos about that stuff. Anyways, so I hope that this has uh, given you some food for thought about sleep disorders and I'll be right back with a video about sleep apnea.